What you see here happens once a year, not for very long, two weeks at best, but in order for this to happen, there is a certain fertilizing regime, which is precisely the question I'm going to answer today as per the request from Thorns and Roses, asking, how do I fertilize my dendrobium aphyllum? Well, I don't just fertilize. I also use a lot of supplements and I like to distinguish between the two because they do different things. While the fertilizer is there to cover all the nutrients, macro and micronutrients, supplements are there to boost a specific nutrient or in the case of CalMag, a combination of nutrients. And supplements can be applied in such a targeted manner at the exact pH range, guaranteeing that nutrients in question are actually being absorbed by the orchid at the time of application. While a well-balanced fertilizer is much needed as well, the fact that the nutrients in a fertilizer have optimal absorption rates at different pH levels can result in some nutrients not being absorbed as intended because the pH is either too high or too low. So yes, my dendrobium aphyllum is on a mount, but you can also grow this orchid potted up. I will address the two different setups on how to fertilize a dendrobium aphyllum because things are a little different when it comes to the orchid being cultivated in a pot. I find that mounts are easier to apply nutrients to because they can be applied on a daily basis and a mounted orchid needs watering every day when in active growth. So it really is possible to fertilize and provide all the different supplements effectively within a single week. Here's what happens with mine as the orchid starts to show the nubbins swelling on the canes as it comes out of winter rest. The first thing I focus on is calcium and magnesium. I use a product that has the two combined, CalMag, and apply that to the roots at 200 parts per million with a pH of 6.7. And that is, once again, the moment nubbins show on the canes. I also add 100 parts per million of seaweed into that mix, making a total of 300 parts per million for those applications. For the first two weeks, CalMag and seaweed is all I focus on, even if there are no new growths. I am using the slow metabolism of this orchid to ensure that CalMag is in the structures of the orchid readily available the moment she decides to push new growths, and the hormones in the seaweed are only a booster to what the orchid is already mobilizing within its own structures by way of hormones. Know that I have a very windy patio, so if I am applying any form of nutrients to the orchid in the morning, by noon I go around with the sprayer again and drench the mount with plain water. This flushes the mount and removes any possible salt accumulation. That is the beauty and simplicity of growing an orchid like this on a mount. Everything can happen within the same day and the same week. After two weeks of CalMag and seaweed only, I start a very low level of my well-balanced fertilizer. For an orchid this size, 200 parts per million is low. At this stage, if there are no eyes swelling at the base, signaling new growths are starting, I only fertilize every second day, but I'm watering the mount every day with plain water, even if I'm not fertilizing. The fertilizing every second day is the focus until I see the eyes at the base starting to swell. At that point, even if the orchid is still not in bloom yet, I focus on calcium nitrate for a full week and that at a strength of 200 parts per million and a pH of 6.7 and I do that every day for a full week and again I follow it up with a drenching of plain water several hours later. I know I'm repeating myself when it comes to going around drenching the mount with plain water but this is important to avoid any salt buildup which could accumulate and then be detrimental to the new roots. The orchid needs all the nutrients in quantity on a regular basis, but the mount must not be allowed to accumulate salts. Once that week of calcium nitrate only has been and gone, the orchid may be in bloom, but I am now focusing on the new growth and during the entire growing season, I do the following. Fertilize application at 300 parts per million two days in a row, followed by one day of plain water only, followed by CalMag and seaweed combo at 300 parts per million two days in a row, followed by one day of plain water only. That is then followed by calcium nitrate at 200 parts per million two days in a row, which is also followed by one day of plain water only. Eventually, well into the growing season, I stop adding seaweed because the hormones are now within the orchid and the roots are already spreading over the mount. It is not necessary to use seaweed for the entire growing season, so if this orchid is in active growth for seven months of the 
the year, I only apply seaweed for four months based on the schedule and the quantity I just referenced. Too many hormones are not good for an orchid and the growing season is well underway, the hormonal boost is not necessary anymore. At some point in time, the canes will start to show their terminal leaf. While still small in size, the leaf that is, that does not mean I stop fertilizing. I push the orchid with the same schedule, with the same quantity, until I see the leaves turning yellow, which signals that the orchid is going dormant. By that time, the orchid is not taking up any nutrients anymore and any applications would just start to accumulate on the mount and leave salt buildup behind. However, the watering doesn't stop. Depending on the temperatures, I may not need to water two times per day. Instead, one watering in the morning usually suffices as the orchid heads into dormancy. But as temperatures drop even further, the drenching of the mount reduces to a light misting, simulating the dew that this orchid would be exposed to in its natural habitat. Happily fast forwarding through the rest period and the whole nutrient supplement schedule starts all over again once nubbins appear on the canes. If I may answer a question that you may have with regards to why do I supplement and fertilize the same two days in a row? Well, I am so glad you asked. I do this because I want to make 100% sure that the orchid gets those nutrients sufficiently. If, for example, one day the mount dries out faster than the absorption rate of the nutrients, I consider day two as backup for eventualities. And if you have found this helpful at this point in time, I would like to ask you to please give this video a thumbs up. Sharing it would be super appreciated, as well as subscribing to the channel to top the support off. And if you feel as though the video warrants a thanks donation toward the upkeep and well-being of the orchids, know that a gesture of that kind is something beyond amazing. Thank you for considering these options on how to support the channel. You have my gratitude. Now, as promised, I would like to briefly approach the fertilizing and supplementing routine of this orchid cultivated in a pot. While it may not be possible to get all the nutrients and supplements into the orchid within the same almost week, I highly recommend that you take the routine, the schedule of providing these supplements to the orchid in the same quantity at the same pH if you cultivate the orchid in a pot. Based on your conditions, temperatures and humidity, your filler may take a little longer to dry out or based on your media mix, your orchid may dry out relatively quickly because as with a mount, you are going by the wet dry cycle. No matter if your pot dries out quickly or your media mix, humidity, etc extends the moisture presence in the pot, please do not skip the flushing step. For any of the fine, delicate new roots to stand a chance, there must be no trace of residual salt buildup or the root tips will burn. Again, go with the same order as I mentioned what I do for my mount, but spread the applications out as per when the pot is dry. However, because your pot will stay wet longer, you only need to do one day per application and there's no need to follow up again with the same nutrients on the following day. So that would look something like this. One day you fertilize, in the next watering cycle you flush. The next watering cycle you use the CalMag and the seaweed combo, and then next watering cycle you flush, and so on and so forth. Know that if you want to take the extra step to flush the pot sooner rather than later, then you can do the same thing I am doing with this orchid mounted because once the orchid has had some time to absorb the nutrients, you can flush the pot the same day. You will not be washing out nutrients the orchid has already absorbed. Instead, you will be cleaning out the pot of any nutrients that did not get absorbed while the pot is still wet. This way, your pot is ready to go for the next application. However, I would definitely include the flushing, no nutrient day as per what I do. Even if you do flush the pot after a while on fertilizing day, sometimes life does get in the way and we can forget things. And that includes flushing the pot after fertilizing on the same day. So to combat those situations and any possible salt buildup, please do not skip that regular flushing day. And please ask Ask me any questions if you have a specific situation in your environment that you may have doubts about with regards to what I just suggested. I would be happy to be more specific in the comments. Thank you, Thorns and Roses, for your request. I hope that this answers your question and thank you so much for joining me on the patio, for watching the video to the end, because this gives me the opportunity to also wish you a beautiful day on the condition, though, that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.